A stabbing during the night in downtown Buffalo. 29-year-old Miguel Acevedo is in Columbus Hospital recovering from wounds to the head and shoulder after being stabbed with an 8-inch butcher knife. Buffalo police have charged 49-year-old Robert E. Brown with assault and possession of a dangerous weapon. A search will resume soon for a 17-year-old missing and presumed drowned in the Lower Niagara River. Anna Dowser was swept away in the current while swimming with some friends in a sheltered area of the river near the Whirlpool Branch. The popular swimming hole, known as Butterfly Rock, has been the scene of numerous drownings through the years. An Erie County Grand Jury will hear evidence into possible wrongdoing in the handling of estate cases by a county surrogate. The investigation reportedly centers on the Office of the Public Administrator, which handles cases of persons who die without leaving wills. The Public Administrator, in turn, appoints lawyers as guardians. The lawyers earn their fees based upon the size of the estate. While the specifics of the probe have not been revealed, the possibility of bribes or kickbacks in awarding that guardianship is already being looked into. Showers and thunderstorms developing. Warm, though, a high around 85, 29 Celsius. Mainly cloudy and humid tonight with showers and thunderstorms continuing to low 18 or 65. Some sunny intervals Thursday, maybe a shower. Tomorrow's high 80. For Friday and Saturday, cloudy with rain likely. Boaters, winds on Lake Erie are mainly south, 10 to 15 knots. Smooth water, watch for showers. Right now, it's 20 Celsius. That's 69 Fahrenheit. Now, why? Not a script book, not a doctor. One of the two things that you get in radio, one of the worst habits, coffee. Love to drink the stuff. Live on it. That and stale donuts. <clears throat> Twenty after six from the Fort Five Thirty CJFT. Good morning. You're along with Bob Dancy, Darrell Wells, and Tom Mather. By the way, the Bertie Willoughby Saddle Club invites everyone to come and see some top-notch horse shows. Now the shows are held at the Saddle Club grounds right on Repstock Road, behind the Ridgeway Arena. And the next show is coming up on the seventeenth, just for you. It's twenty after six. Good morning and welcome to it, huh? Autoland Chrysler is your determined to please dealer. Oh. Finally, the Autoland difference makes its way all through Niagara. Autoland Chrysler is determined to please their Southern Tier customers the same way they've been pleasing all of Niagara. First, with a great selection of new cars, all with Chrysler's five year, 50,000 dollar warranty. Second, with Autoland's equally great line of midsize, compact and subcompact new cars. And reserves unmatched anywhere in the area. Autoland Chrysler. Minutes from anywhere on Montreal Road. <clears throat> Six twenty-two from the Fort Five Thirty CJFT. You're along with Bob Dancy, bidding you a very good morning. Hey, it's a Wednesday, yeah, midweek over the hump day, and you know what that means, yeah, only a couple more to go to the weekend, and then we're into the fun sun and what other, I mean, anything else you want to get into, you know. <clears throat> we just won't delve into those heavy, heavy details of the bikini-clad beaches and that sort of thing. Here's Jennifer Rush and the Power of Love from the Fort CJFT. Oh, really? We're calling it light stuff today? Hey, dead guy. Hey, dead guy. Like, are we talking b ball? Sure, the Blue Jays lose another one. Hey, the mistake on the lake is blowing it too. I love it. <laughs> that, by the way, is Daryl Wells Jr. He is not the retired or forced to retire, Daryl Wells. Fame and fortunate Fort Erie racetrack. Catch the action.
626 from the Fort 530 CJFT along with Bob Dancy, Tom Aether, and even, yes indeed, Daryl Wells. I can't believe it, you slept in after all this time. I figured, gee, Daryl's gonna, yeah, making it before I do every morning and all this sort of thing, have the coffee and the donuts ready. Oh, that was it. Oh yeah, well we called it quarter to five instead. <laughs> hey, Daryl, what's happening? Get out of bed, man. Anyhow, speaking about uh, getting out of bed, obviously the Blue Jays have uh, not figured out that yet as they got uh, dumped by the Royals again. And, and even the mistake on the lake lost. Twice! I love it. I love it. You see? That's, <laughs> That's it. That's it. You got it. You know? What the heck? Hey, in big time sports, you can do it twice in one night. Blow it. Right down the old crane convenience. Anyhow, what else is happening? By pitcher Dennis Lamp gave the Kansas City Royals the opportunity they needed to put away Toronto 8-6. to Lamp's error in the third inning allowed two runs to score. Then he allowed another run to score on a wild pitch. Before it was all over, Kansas City had taken a 5-1 lead. The loss spoiled some heavy hitting by the Blue Jays. Lloyd Mosby homered twice and George Bell added another homer. Rick Leach then topped that by slugging a three-run shot in the seventh to make things close. The Jays now fall to six and a half games back of Boston. Baltimore is only two and a half games back of the league-leading Boston Red Sox. Last night, Baltimore defeated Texas 9-2. As we mentioned, Detroit took a doubleheader from Cleveland, winning 6-5 and 11-9. Chicago over the Boston Red Sox 3-1. California beat Minnesota 13 to 1 and Oakland down Seattle 10 to 4. Over in the National League, the Montreal Expos shut out Pittsburgh 3 0. Chicago beat the Mets 8 to 5. St. Louis over Philadelphia 7 4. Atlanta defeated San Diego 3 2. Houston dumped LA 10 to 2. That was the first loss by the Dodgers in nine games. And Cincinnati over San Francisco, the score there. 11 to 6. Must have taken offense to Monday night's whipping by the Buffalo Bison. Last night, they dealt it out 11 hits to down the herd. 20 or 69. Great permanent. going to become of them. A the useless football league, league dies again. Players union officials Good. tomorrow to decide how to deal with the contracts of more than 400 players. The USFL has suspended operations until 1987. It's not yet certain what effect the USFL's situation will have on the Canadian Football League, but League Commissioner Doug Mitchell says Canadian teams have been instructed not to negotiate with any players under contract to the USFL until at least Friday. At CJFT Sports, Tom Mather is next. There's heart in this land, it's there a long way through. That's why I have to come on this country, reach for the blue. And when we get together, it's a taste such a clean and true. So when you call, when you call. At 6.31, this is a CJFT News break for Gray Permanent. Premier David Peterson and his oh, captain... Oh, sure, a minute late. Local. Shoot me. ...in the hailstorms which battered Niagara on the lake. And until he gets a good look at those reports, Peterson is not saying whether hard-hit farmers are going to get provincial aid. About 300 growers packed an emergency meeting of town council last night to air their concerns. Flood ravaged Lake Erie residents could find out Friday what Joe Clark has in mind for easing the risk of future flooding. That's because the International Joint Commission is meeting tomorrow in Ottawa. IJC member Bob Welch, the former deputy premier, tells CJFT he expects Clark will demand action on recommendations already on paper rather than await more study. One man is in custody, another recovering in hospital following a stabbing in downtown Buffalo during the night. 29-year-old Miguel Acevedo was attacked with an 8-inch butcher knife. Charged is 49-year-old 
Robert Brown. Could this mean more government business for MBB? That's the question we'll be trying to answer for you following word that Ottawa wants to replace our Navy's aging fleet of Sea King helicopters. CJFT News will be on the phone once the office opens. $200 million in provincial money is being set aside to upgrade cancer treatment in Ontario. The bulk of the money will pay for a facelift of Toronto's Princess Margaret Hospital, Canada's largest cancer treatment facility. The balance will go into centres in Hamilton, London and Sunbury. Officials in the Canadian oil industry are warning us not to get too optimistic over OPEC's cutback in production. Industry analysts expect it will be months before any new jobs open up. Prime Minister Brian Mulroney says new sanctions against South Africa could be in place by October 1st. He made the prediction in Ottawa after returning from a Commonwealth mini-summit in London. There was a moment of silence in Hiroshima where the world's first atomic attack took place 41 years ago today. About 50,000 people gathered in a peace park and called for an end to the buildup of nuclear weapons. The 40 degree forecast has clouds and sun today with showers and thunderstorms developing. Warm though, high around 85, 29 Celsius. Mainly cloudy and humid tonight with showers and thunderstorms continuing the low 18 or 65. Some sunny intervals Thursday, maybe a shower, tomorrow's high 80. For Friday and Saturday, cloudy with rain likely. Right now, 20 Celsius, 69 Fahrenheit. With the CJFT News Break, I'm Tom Mather. And this is it, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, indeed. By Linda Carlisle. Used to be with the Go-Go's. She got up and went. So the band was going right down the flusher. Literally. Half a dozen big hits, and then their lips were kissed by death. Pyrotechnical effects, if you want. All flash and no substance. You know, what we do is just try and pound out the information that is pertinent to the people who are listening and to our demographics. Our demographics are aimed at 18 to 49 year olds, which happens to be the most lucrative if you're talking advertising dollar. Um, this music that we run is geared towards that demographic. Everything we do on the air is geared towards that demographic. You know, it'd be silly for us to talk about, you know, a denture therapy clinic when probably Nobody who you would use that service would be listening to this radio station. So, everything we do on the air, the way we style the radio station, the way the news is presented, the way the sports is done, everything is all geared to our demographic. Every time we do anything, it's all geared towards our demographic. You know, a lot of radio stations try to be everything to all people. You just can't be, especially in these days. Uh, you know, radio is so diversified now, it's become a very very, very specialized medium. One radio station will be going after a very narrow demographic of 18 to 24 year old males. Another radio station will be going after women between the age of 25 and 49. Another radio station will be going after the over 50 year olds. You know, it, it becomes very, very specialized. I guess you're responsible for the programming. Yeah, I am responsible for the programming. I am the program director and with that lovely title comes the responsibility of making sure that everything that does go on the air is geared towards demographic. That what we do on the air will get us the ratings, both in the BBMs and the Arbitrons. The higher our ratings, the better we can compete for the advertising dollar that is on the streets throughout the peninsula, as well hopefully in the years to come in the western New York and Buffalo area. Oh, 638 from the Ford 530 CJFT. Hey, good morning and welcome to it, man. It's a midweek Wednesday as you haul yourself out of the bed, yeah. Kind of crawling towards the showers, do the coffee thing, and then out the door into the office. Hey, do it every morning, know what you mean. Here's the box and my dreams of you from the Ford 530 CJFT. Morning and welcome to it. How do you select your music? Do you pick that yourself or do you use a service? Um, the music that we use, uh, every piece that is in the run, I have listened to and said yes or no to it. So every piece that is in the rotation right now, obviously I've heard it 
and it's all right to be played. Now, the way we do our music is we do it through a, in sense, a cataloging system. Various music is, uh, the various artists and the songs and that sort of thing are busted up into various categories. Canadian, which uh, in Canada you have to do Canadian content. Uh, we have to do 30% Canadian content. Thus means three out of every 10 songs, 30 out of every 100 songs that you play has to be Canadian. And that's on a per day basis. They only count Canadian content between 6 in the morning and midnight. Between midnight and 6 a.m. You don't have to play any Canadian whatsoever. But where you get your ratings and where you get your big rating numbers and go for the advertising dollars between 6 in the morning and midnight. So um, you've got to be very, very careful on what you do play. A lot of the time some radio stations will play something and it'll do more damage to them than if they just didn't play it. Can you give that, us a for instance? Um, for instance, uh, the song that not too recently uh, was uh, in sense a quasi hit, if you want, uh, Rock Me Amadeus by Falco. That song came up the charts extremely fast and we all played it. I had certain restrictions on the song where we wouldn't play it before, we wouldn't play it at all during the morning show. It was just a song that, you know, is just too noisy, too loud to be played in the morning show. A song like that fell off the charts rather rapidly, and then all of a sudden, it just became a nothing song. It had no substance, didn't carry it all, or anything like that. It wasn't like a, a Lionel Richie tune, um, Running With The Night, that is still a good song today and can be played today and will stand up and hold its ground. Rock Me Amadeus was a good song, but for what we're doing and that sort of thing, it didn't do anything for us. It would probably do me more harm to leave it in the rotation and let it run every once in a while whenever it came up than to pull it. Nobody misses it, but yet if I played it, somebody would sure enough hear it and say, ah, oh, geez, I don't like that, and they hit the button in the car or they turn the dial at the radio at home and that sort of thing, and then I'm in real trouble. By the way, tonight, if you're joining me out at the County Fair Mall at 7 o'clock, don't forget to bring the umbrella just in case, okay? I don't want to have to say I told you so, but weather-wise, look cloud, little sun today, maybe some rain, thunderstorms developing. It's going to be a warm one, though. Look for highs of 85 or 29. Mainly cloudy and humid tonight. Some sunny intervals tomorrow, maybe a shower. Right now, 20 or 69 with Rick Ocasek and the cars from CJFT. How much flexibility do you give you guys to play songs? How do they um, do the songs? The songs I mentioned are categorized. Um, the various degrees of hits, uh, the gold categories, uh, the Canadian hits and that sort of thing. They're all categorized so that when they come up to a particular category, when it calls for that category to come up, all they do is they pick out the first song in that category. If that song, depending on what time of the day they're on, happens to carry a restriction. They just ignore the song and go to the next one. We'll keep this, the song that has the restriction in the rotation, just move it back and it'll automatically just roll itself up through and forward to come up again. But there is a certain bit of flexibility. It's not like um, myself, I'd play one, let's say, style of music through the morning keeping it very consistent, that sort of thing, staying on the rotation and staying on format. Uh, and then the midday guy would come in and he'd do uh, something else and just decide to play, ah, I don't like playing the new hits and that sort of stuff, and play all the old classic heavy rock. And then the guy in the afternoon would come in and play uh, all the love songs. And the guy at night would just decide, oh, heck, you know, I want to do heavy metal and do heavy metal. It would give, your, it would give you a very, very fragmented station, number one. People wouldn't know what the hell they're going to get when they tune into it. You know, you just got to remember that the listener is the boss, you know. Um, you can't really, I, I can't say you can't, but you try your darndest not to upset the boss in a sense, which is the listener. Nobody realizes, but the listener is the boss. The listener pays your bills, the listener gets you that rating point, that share point in the market, and they'll bring you the advertising dollars as they come in. Without them, you're sunk, you're dead meat. 
Um, so you've got to be very, you, we do have some flexibility, but then on the other hand, I've got to lay down the law and say, hey guys, this is the, what we're doing. Please follow it. And the guys are very, very good at it. They stay, and I've had guys, some of the, my announcers come up to me and say, hey Bob, there's a song that that's running right now, I think you should put a restriction on it because it's it doesn't sound proper for the morning show or you know maybe we should restrict it till after three o'clock in the afternoon just not something that would fit into the mornings or middays and that sort of thing. And I'll tell you, I got, if, he w if he would come up to me and tell me that I'd rather buy him the LP and ha than have him play it on the air. It'll do me more harm him playing it than not playing it. I don't care if any other radio station is playing it, whatever time of day they're playing it. This is what I'm doing and this is what the radio station is designed for. I guess you rely heavily on the ratings then. <clears throat> every radio station does. Every announcer does. Um, the ratings are where we make our bread and butter. You know, let, let's be realistic about it. Uh, ratings are important, sure. Uh, Without the ratings, obviously your radio station is going to be very, very dead uh, because no advertiser will buy a whole lot of time on it and spend a lot of money. Because if he doesn't think you have any people listening to your radio station, why would you spend the money there? If you're, if you're an advertiser, why would you spend, let's say, five or $10,000 for the radio station that doesn't have any ratings? When you could spend the five or $10,000 on a radio station that does have very good ratings and in the age brackets that you want. Wouldn't that make more sense? It certainly does. I guess the ratings also uh, reflect on your personnel in the station too. Oh yeah, it, it does. Um, you know, if, if one particular guy happens to be getting very, very good ratings, let's say in, in the afternoon show or the evening show, but yet the ratings are really, really sluggish or, or almost nil in the middays, you gotta sit down and you say, okay, uh, the evening guy is doing a heck of a job, or the afternoon guy is doing a heck of a job, or the midday or the morning guy, whatever the case, this particular person is doing a good job. However, this show is not doing exactly what it is supposed to do. It's not getting the numbers. It's not getting the ratings. And you sit there and you go, what's wrong with it? Well, then you start eliminating all the factors. Okay, the music is the same throughout. Okay. Um, the commercials. Well, they sound good. What makes that? Now what is the guy or girl, whoever, happens to be on the air, are they doing? And you sit down and you really listen to them. You sit down, uh, you listen to them hours and hours at end. You listen to every show, every break they do, you record it and you listen back and you say, they're not doing something. And what they're not doing is getting you ratings. Then you've got a problem, then you gotta say, I have to have somebody in there who can get ratings. Can this person do it? Or is this person right at his limits and he just can't do it? And if he can't do it, then you've got to say, okay, what do I have to do to get somebody in here who can? Now, obviously, you have to make room for one person by dropping another. And that's, that's the unfortunate part of this business, uh, with ratings meaning so much. You know, a lot of announcers' jobs hang on every, every, uh, every ratings book. Do you, you say that it's mostly a, a personality problem they have getting over the air? Is that why people lose ratings? It, it could be, yeah, it could be a personality problem. The guy might come on and do um, very off-color jokes constantly. Now, sometimes you can get away with a, a mildly off-color joke. Other times, there's just no way. You know, first thing in the morning, you can't start talking about... Uh, Oh, I heard this great joke about this guy and this girl that were down at the beach and just keep going on and get into the graphic little details of it all. And some guy will be sitting at home having breakfast chewing on his Rice Krispies or his cornflakes and you'll hit the punchline. This guy will spit his cornflakes or Rice Krispies all over the wall and redecorate. You know, And then he'll call up the radio station and say to the station manager or the general manager or the salesman or whatever, say, hey, you idiots, you got this guy in the morning. He's firing off these off-color jokes, and my kids were listening to the radio and this sort of thing, and it's disgusting and gross, the guy should be fired. And, you know, what do you do then? So, you know, you've got to do everything in good taste. <clears throat> hey. 11 minutes away from 7, from the fort, CJFT, good morning.
<laughs> okay, and then another so, pair? Hmm? I haven't got it. I haven't got it, so I have to type a letter or something. What do you need? Passes? I think I might have some on my desk. I mean, you got you haven't got dailies, do you? I don't know. Which ones you got? The blue ones or the white ones? I don't know. The stupid business card call of the day thing, so. First thing in the morning, you know, at 10 to 8, he goes, Hey, Joe Smith, get out of bed, Joe. Time to go to work, Joe. Right? Joe Smith had been dead for a year and a half. His wife caught it and was, like, highly upset. <clears throat> Some guys just don't know what to do when they get in trouble. Said. But, um, so anyhow, anyhow. The wife calls in and literally just took strips out of the radio station, the general manager, the president, everybody. You know, very, very upset the lady was. You know, I guess, I guess you'd be the same way if some guy in the radio said, Hey, Joe, get out of bed. And, Joe had been dead for a year and a half, and it was your brother, you know, you'd kill the guy. So, <clears throat> consequently, that, uh, that portion of the program was nuked. No more calls in the morning. Well, that is the reference to uh, get out of bed, dead guy. Just yeah. some of the uh, weird and wonderful things that happen in radio, and there are lots of them. Yeah. WKRP, this is not, but... Uh, it's pretty close, though I never admit that. Can you explain to us a bit about what, what's going on right now? Music's on. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is my 90-second break from it all. Uh, right now, I just roll the music up until uh, the sports comes in. Uh, during the morning show, we run basically on a 30 minute schedule we have which means we've got news at uh, the top of the hour bottom of the hour and sports prior to each newscast so run on a 30 minute sched means that between 7 and 7:30 you're going to probably get in I'll get in more music than a lot of radio stations will in the morning show I'm probably going to blast about 5 songs a half an hour and also in that half hour, get in one newscast, a sportscast, commercials, a uh, couple of weather forecasts, public service announcements, and a sports commentary of my own, you know. So right now, you're just back timing into the sportscast, which is coming up in about 60 seconds. As Howard Cosell says, back in 60 seconds. It's four minutes away from seven from the Fort 530 CJFT. You're along with Bob Dancy, Tom Mather, and even. Yep. Okay. Yeah, Prince of Wales is coming up. Uh, what about a week? Not even a week. Yeah, Monday. Yeah. That's it. It's coming up tonight, the uh, fashion show with uh, all the lovely Miss Prince of Wales contestants. It's a rough part of the job, but, you know, somebody's got to do it. That's it. Yeah, he'll be out there from the track. Yeah, uh, as well as some of the jockeys, I understand, are going to be out there. Good stuff. Yeah, there'll be Daryl going, Hey, look at that. How you doing? That's it. Hey, guy, what's happening in sports? An agreement reached by players and owners two weeks ago. Oops. Player Chief Alan Eagle said he's expected to announce today. What's it, 21? Close to it. Although he hasn't been yeah, I'll call 21. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Accutemp. The only way to fly.
something that's local, something that's uh, of major interest or importance to people in this area. In, a, in an area the size of Fort Erie, things that might seem trivial in a city like Toronto tend to be big news. Uh, this morning, for example, uh, I'm leading with the fact that uh, Town Council in Niagara on the Lake has uh, passed a resolution asking the province to declare the region a disaster area. I'm not laughing at the fact that it is a disaster area, but I mean, uh, that's that's big news. Uh, that means that farmers who uh, are facing total bankruptcy can be in line for federal or provincial assistance. Um, it's a story that's that's been in the news for a couple of days now, ever since the weekend storm. Uh, when you look at what else is happening today, uh, we have stabbing in Buffalo, a drowning, uh, you know, they're Cancer uh, Institute, that would have been a good lead. Um, it's a human interest story. Uh, that's something that affects a lot of people. Uh, maybe uh, somebody you know or a friend of a friend has cancer. There are a lot of people who have cancer today. That, that would be a, an interesting lead. Um, other than that, there really isn't a whole lot of earth-shattering stuff going on today. Um, and as a result, I go with the local story. Where do you get most of your news from? The bulk of our news comes in from the uh, broadcast news wire service. Uh, I'm sure uh, most of your people are familiar with uh, BN. They have a facility in Toronto. They receive probably uh, eight or ten wire services. Uh, the BN people act as the gatekeepers. They do the picking and choosing from AP, Reuters, uh, Canadian Press. And then they dispatch it out in summary form uh, as separates. 
they also provide us with our sports. Um, here in this area, we also uh, take a look through the Buffalo News every morning. Uh, the Toronto Star is also a good source for, uh, for news as well. Do you have any reporters covering local stories? Not presently. Um, basically what we're doing is, uh, as you know, this is a brand new operation. We've been on the air just a little more than a month. Uh, there's myself in the morning and uh, another chap that does the afternoon news run. And between us, we try to cover off as much as we can outside of the station uh, until we get um, some additional uh, revenues coming in and when we can take a look at a balance sheet and say, okay, this is how much revenue we're going to be generating here at this outlet, uh, it's hard to say, yeah, okay, I've got money, I can go out and hire a reporter now. So in the interim, uh, Murray and myself will be doing the bulk of the reporting, but uh, there are plans uh, on the drawing board for, for a reporter. But in the meantime, it's uh, the two of us, uh, we tend to wear a, a number of different hats around here. You do all the local news on your own. That's right. Yeah. Murray covers the town council. Uh, I tend to cover off things that happen uh, in the afternoon, let's say, uh, 1, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Because uh, it's a little hard for me to cover things at night and then expect to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning. So Murray does the evening stuff, and uh, I tend to do the uh, daytime stuff. Maybe you can describe for me just a typical day in the life of Tom Mathers when he wakes up. A typical day. Okay. Uh, my typical day begins uh, rather atypically at 3.30 in the morning uh, when I shake the cobwebs out of my head, hop in the shower, uh, get in the car, come here. I'm usually here by about 4.30. Uh, I only live about five minutes from the station. Uh, first things first, to clear the wire off. It's usually piled right up from overnight because nobody clears it during the night, of course. Um, get it all sorted out. Um, then I run next door, get a paper, take a quick look through the papers, find out if anything uh, of interest is in there. I get going on writing up a few stories. I try to get ahead of myself if I can. Uh, do the police checks and then uh, monitor uh, the competition in Buffalo, 5 o'clock, 5.30, and uh, just type away. Um, like I say, I try to get ahead of myself a little because with casts coming up every half hour, 6, 6.30, 7, 7.30, 8, 8.39, it gets a little busy. And uh, as, as far ahead as possible, uh, you know, I, try to, I try to be a uh, cast ahead of myself. So at 7, uh, I'm really working on my 8 o'clock. 7.30 would be done. And uh, that's one of the advantages of coming in early. Uh, you know, I have, I have worked with people who, uh, who work the morning run, and they'll show up at, you know, half an hour before airtime, and they'll just rip and read all morning. I, I personally can't do that, simply because you can't trust me in. There are a lot of typographical errors, uh, lines repeated, and uh, you can get killed on the air very easily with that stuff. How do you keep the news fresh and interesting every, every do newscast every half hour? Rewriting. Um, that's, I think that's the secret. Um, I'm not saying I don't use copies, because I do, but I usually try to leave at least four hours between casts. So if I use a story at 6 and I'm stuck for something at 10 or 11, I may use a copy of that story from six. Um, it's common practice to, at some stations, uh, to to simply write up one or two newscasts and just keep rotating your copies all morning. Um, I personally don't subscribe to that philosophy, uh, simply because, as you say, uh, it, it's just not fresh. There are people who do get up at six o'clock in the morning and will hear your six o'clock and will hear your eight o'clock, and if they sound identical, the people are going to know it. Um, it's just it's just a, a habit that I think is a good habit to get into. Uh, rewriting all the time, rewrite everything. Uh, the stuff that comes down the end is is quite easy to read, you know, generally, but. Uh, you know, for the amount of time it takes you to rewrite it, it's good practice. And, and once you get into a, the habit of rewriting, it it kind of comes by itself. You know, the more you do it, it's like anything, the more you do it, the easier it becomes. 
Where did you uh, get your training from? Did you start off from the college? Um, yeah, I went to uh, Niagara College down here uh, in uh, Welland. Three years there. Uh, my third year, during my third year, I was working full time at CJRN in Niagara Falls in the newsroom. I was doing the evening news run there. Uh, shortly after graduation, I went to Montreal. I worked at CFCF, uh, CFQR FM. Then I went to uh, Ottawa for uh, the better part of three years, where I covered uh, the afternoon news run. I also did some reporting, and uh, I ended up on Parliament Hill for a while, and that was fascinating. And um, from there, um, Family considerations brought me back down to this region, and I was lucky enough to get work in St. Catharines. And while I was working in St. Catharines, I was approached uh, by the people who are running this place about uh, taking on the duties of a news director. And that was a challenge that I had always been looking forward to, uh, the idea of getting into something on the ground level and, and starting things up from scratch so that you don't end up going into a situation where you start off and you always get the same line, well that's not how we do things around here, this is the way we do things. Uh, I wanted things done the way I like them to be done. So I had the opportunity to, to basically put the newsroom together from nothing. Uh, the files, the formats, the programming, the timing, uh, even the mechanical things like wiring up uh, boards and, and what have you. Uh, it's an invaluable experience. Not that I'm going to stay here forever, but uh, it will definitely uh, be to my advantage if I do choose to move on. What advice can you offer someone who would be starting off <coughs> the best way to get into the business? I think you have to be patient, and I think you have to be prepared to pretty well take anything that comes your way. You can't really afford to be too picky. I know it would be nice, we'd all probably like to work in Toronto or Vancouver or Calgary, but uh, if it means working in uh, Meaford, Saskatchewan for th the first year or uh, Goose Bay, Labrador, <coughs> so be it. Uh, <coughs> I think initially the, the first goal of, of any, anybody looking for work <coughs> excuse me, is to get that first job and get the experience. And if you want to be a news person, perhaps, um, do anything and everything that comes your way. Uh, it may sound a little like uh, slave labor, or maybe you don't want to set yourself up to be the fall guy for, uh, for a news director, you know, I'll do this, do that, do this, do that. But I think uh, what I have found is every little bit that you learn along the way can only help somewhere down the road. I did a lot of, th I've done a lot of things that I didn't really agree with, uh, philosophically let's say, uh, the way that some newsrooms were run content wise, but uh, I mean it's, it's all helped, it's all helped along the way and uh, I think patience, perseverance and uh, just a willingness to do anything, uh, don't, don't be too picky. What kind of qualities do you look for in a news reporter? In a news reporter, somebody who, who can sit down and digest what's happening at a meeting or, or at a news conference. Put the facts down on paper, get the facts right, and tell me what it means for our listeners. Uh, it's very easy to come back with uh, a load of facts and figures and the government's going to do this and that, but what does it mean? Does it mean that homeowners here are going to be paying less taxes? Or does it mean that you'll be able to get across the Peace Bridge quicker because Customs is adding some people on? Um, news is people. People make news and, and news affects the people who are listening. And, and I think that that's the, the key, is accuracy and, uh, and simplifying things. Put it, put it in, in language that people can understand. I went to school for radio, so when the station opened up this was an opportunity for me to get into sports. Because working at the track, we're only working three days a week over there now, so I can do the races on the weekends and I'm here in the mornings. What time do you get in? I'm usually here around 4 o'clock, 4.30. Try to get up about 3.30 and get here, you know, get here by 4.30 just to wake up and 
And then what, do you run out of the track after you finish here? Usually on Mondays, I finish here at about 8.30, I go home and uh, shave and get changed and uh, come back here and I do the 12 o'clock sports. Uh, <coughs> we've got a racing preview we do at uh, 12.15, so we do that and then it's over to the track and I do the afternoon races. It must be a long day for you. It is. Monday's a real long day. Today's not too bad because... Uh, Finish up here, I go home and sleep for a while. <laughs> On race days, it's a long day. <coughs> How do you like the sports business? I like it. Uh, I've always been interested in sports, so uh, when this uh, opportunity to be on the air came about, uh, I took full advantage of it. And uh, I really like sports, and I've been watching sports a lot. Anyhow, what you've got here is uh, B350 series console, 10 channel stereo console. Uh, this console happens to be the latest one of this series from Broadcast Electronics who supplied us this and who we generously, because we didn't have anything else to do with our money, paid them for it. It's a 10 channel stereo console. And this board happens to be the first one of this design in Canada so far. Um, as I say, it's fully stereo. It has uh, output capabilities right now of 10 channels at one time. It has uh, total input capabilities of 22 channels. You keep your mic on a specific channel? Yes, the mic, the announce mic uh, for the master control room is on one pot alone, is on the first pot. That's that, the only one on that pot. Is that uh, a standard, keeping it on the first channel? Uh, yeah. It could be a standard. You know, I've seen them on other channels and that sort of thing. But uh, usually radio stations will try and just leave the master control room microphone, the main announcer mic, on one pot, one channel, by itself, with nothing else there. That way there is hopefully no problems to arise, that sort of thing. Uh, this console also is uh, fully complete with an audition channel, which means that we can see the kind of levels and punch through levels into a recording mode into something that is, that's recording it, i.e. the reel-to-reel, -reel, which is over there. That's a Rebox, uh, fully digital, reel-to-reel. -reel. It's got the Z-Lock on it and all that sort of stuff, memory and the whole bag, ball of wax. Uh, it's very good for us. Gives us the capabilities of recording things, putting that specific piece into the memory of where it is on the tape, and then running it back to cue right to that point. What do you use that machine for? Use the reel-to-reel -reel for recording contests on the air and that sort of thing when we call contest winners and tell them they've just won a trip or whatever the case may be. Um, staying with Broadcast Electronics, we're using uh, Broadcast Electronics cart machines, fully stereo as well. And they're two triple decks, so it gives us six playback units. Hang on a second here. Twenty after eight from the Ford 530 CJFT. Clouds, sun, some rain today. Same kind of thing for tomorrow. Look for highs of about 85. Right now it's 22. As I said, these uh, units are strictly playback only. Uh, they are fully stereo, and there's two triple decks, six individual cart slots and each one will have its own slide pot. That way it gives us the capability of having six different functions all in one time or simultaneously. <clears throat> it's 20 after eight from the Fort 530 CJFT. Well, both the Toronto Blue Jays and Boston Red Sox lost. As well, the mistake on the Lake Cleveland. They lost a pair. Well, the Jays still remain six and a half games back in the American League East. Tonight, the Jays will do battle once again with the Kansas City Royals at CNE. Here's Chalk Circle and April Fool from the Fort, 5.30, CJFT. Hey, morning to you. You put all your music on carts. Is that uh, just for convenience? 
for uh, multiple of reasons. Uh, convenience, yes. Uh, lifespan is another. Um, quality is another one. Um, cards tend to last a heck of a lot longer than, than discs, than 45s or LPs. Uh, best example of that is how many records at home do you have that you played a half a dozen times and are now scratched, covered with fingerprints, warped, and or broken. You know, that's why radio stations, because there's so many people, you know, different people who use this. If it's just you yourself, and you happen to be very, very careful of what you're doing, what you're touching, how you're, you know, working with your records and that sort of thing, you can keep them for a lot longer than a lot of people. But some people tend to be fairly rough with them. Uh, these cards, uh, their A2s, are fairly durable. Like I can bounce it off the wall, put it back in the machine, and it'd be fine. Um, I've seen cards last as long as uh, 8 to 10 years. And that's a heck of a lot longer than a 45 or an LP. You have to transfer all the music onto those yourself? Yes, we do that all ourselves. We uh, record it all ourselves onto the cart uh, in our production room where we've got a Rams a 16 track stereo console. Record all the music on the cart. That way, number one, we've got the disc on file in case the machine, the car machine, happens to get hungry and eats the tape. Uh, the other thing is the carts have a much longer life expectancy than a 45, as I indicated earlier. So that's always, you know, something to keep in mind. You don't go, you don't have to go out every three or four days and purchase a new assortment of 45s or LPs. We're also using compact laser disc, which happens to be the latest in technology. And they're like a very small 45. It's, un when the compact laser disc, I'm told, when it's put together, it is not put together by hand. It's all mechanically done. And there it is. That is a compact laser disc. Is that, is that going to revolutionize the future of radio, or...? I don't know if it'll revolutionize. 8-Track uh, was supposed to do it, or... Yeah, 8-Track was supposed to do that, and it went in the way of the Dodo Bird. Uh -huh. um, so, who knows? Compact laser discs right now are, one, very expensive, uh, two, hard to get a hold of, because they, there's only two places in the world that they're making these and producing compact laser discs. We've got a pair of compact uh, disc machines in here right now, and they're great. They uh, queue quick. They work beautifully. And I don't ever have to run into major, major problems with it all. Give me one second here. If you're just getting up and getting moving this morning, well, welcome to it. It's 824. From 530 CJFT, you've got Bob Dancy, Darrell Wells, and Tom Mather. Here's Men at Work and Down Under from the Fort. Um, anyhow, as I was saying, compact laser discs are great. Uh, they're better than a tape because I'm told that they're virtually indestructible. Now, naturally, if you want to break something, you can do it. You know, give me a two-pound sledgehammer, and I'll drop it on it and see how well it'll work after that. You'll probably break it. Um, but from on, on the basis of day-to-day -day use, fingerprints don't affect it. The oil from your fingers don't affect it. Uh, I've even seen people throw a load of coffee on it, wipe it off with their shirt, put it in the machine, and it sounds just as clear as it did ten minutes prior to that when it was first broken out of the box, brand new. Before also, you, you have a, oh, sorry, you're going to say something about the turntable. Okay, the turntable we've got in here right now, and just because once eons ago we were given the term disc jockeys, I guess now every radio station just has to have one in the control room. Uh, we've got a Panasonic Techniques uh, direct drive quartz turntable. It uh, has on it very speed and a pitch control. And we have that in here. We don't use it that often. Most of the times it will sit with the dust cover on and that's it and never be used for months. I have a bunch of papers in front of you. What are those all? Okay, in front of me I have the, the log of which I 
and told, or the computer spits out, exactly what commercials go when and where, when the news is coming up, when the sports is coming up, and that sort of thing. It tells you when to play the commercials and that. Uh, other sheets in front of me are, is my music list, as well as the uh, scoreboard from last night for the various sporting events, uh, baseball, and football, and that sort of thing, as well as just some of my incense dummy sheets so that I know what's coming up, just some of the things that I can't remember right off the top of my head all the time. So I'll bring in some sheets so that I know what's coming up, what's happening around me, and all that sort of thing. In between, uh, I know a lot of our, our students are having problems with ad living. Yep. How do you pick your subjects? And, and where do you get all that talk day in and day out? Read. A lot. I read the, uh, in this area, I read the Niagara Falls Review, St. Catherine Standard, USA Today. I glanced at the Toronto Star and I read various magazines every week. It's just keep well informed. So you can talk Basically about that's it. it, yeah, so you know, you don't look like such a dummy when you go to open your mouth. So you can have an intelligent conversation with yourself at times. <clears throat> and crawling from the land down under, Daryl Wells and the latest dope on your favorite soap. Yes, indeed. I'm great. I love it, the USFL is good. I love it, the useless football league. That's it, I knew they wouldn't last. No, they That's it. Speaking about NFL, there was real football last night. I love it. Houston beat the LA Rams 17-14. I love that. I love it. The armchair quarterbacks. That's it. Armchair quarterbacks are back at their best. What else is happening? Main Street East in Stevensville. George Brett hit a two-run homer as the Kansas City Royals beat the Toronto Blue Jays last night 8-6. Kansas City scored five runs in the third inning, held by two errors and a wild pitch. Scott Bankhead improved his record to 5-5. Five and five. He gave up five runs over on seven hits in seven innings. All of Toronto's runs scored on four homers, including two by Lloyd Mosby. Dennis Lamb took the loss. His record falls to two and six. Other games yesterday, Detroit took a double header from Cleveland. The Red Sox and the Yankees lost again. You don't uh, audition your level before you put your cards in. You pretty well know where they are now. I pretty well know where most of them are. Uh, this console is the console in production, the uh, 16 track, the 16 channel is. Uh, is matched up with this one, so they're both set. Levels are set on them, pre, all preset. The tones are run through and that sort of thing. That way, we have consistent levels from production to master control, and when everything goes on the air, everything's recorded in production. Music, commercials, that sort of thing, is done in production. So when it comes into here, we pretty much know exactly where the levels are going to be. So you don't you don't have any problems with it. I guess you also have a compressor and everything else. Oh, yeah. We have all that buried out at the transmitter site. AM stereo processors, equalizers, and various other fun things, you know, to go along with the microwaves and that. You got off the low end of the band. Was there any particular reason for that? Or? Well, the reason we chose 530, number one, there was nobody on it. Um, the other is that uh, 5.30, the AM band was opened to actually 5.25, uh, and 5.30, where we are right now, we're the first commercial radio station in Canada to use 5.30 as a commercial radio frequency. So it, it was, it's kind of neat. You know, besides, throughout the rest of the dial, there's no room anywhere. Sports brought to you by McGregor Miller Insurance. Tom Mather is next. Sure, it's hard swallowing the dent in the car or the antique boss. Um, when we were looking around, 2272. Okay, hit a 2374. How's that? When you deal with McGregor Miller, community minded for over 30 years, and centrally located. 3701 Main Street, East Stevensville. Call 382-2431. McGregor Miller. At 8.30, this is a CJFT News. Century 21, today, Realty, Jarvis Street, Fort Erie. An anxious day for Niagara-on-the-Lake farmers. 
at Peterson Cabin. He's meeting in Queens Park to consider the town's request to have the area declared a disaster. We're talking about the frequency. What kind of power are you putting out? Right now we're putting out uh, 250 watts at 530. Now before you go 250 watts, you know, you hear radio stations that are at 25,000, 10,000, 5,000, 50,000, 100,000, that sort of thing. That's fine, but look at their position on the dial. They need that much power to get their signal out through the rest of the signals that are around them. It's like a war zone in certain parts of the dial. When you get up into the midsection of the dial, up around the 800s, 900s, then get up around 10, 11, 12. There's so many radio stations, so many frequencies in there, it's incredible. At 5.30, there is no other radio station pinned around me. The next closest is 5.50, and from that it's 5.70. There's nobody below me. How important is position on the dial to a radio station? Very important. I've got bragging rights. I can go around saying, hey, I'm first on the dial. No other radio station could say that. So for an advertising ploy, it's great. I can go out and say, hey, we're number one on the dial. It gives you the subliminal thing that, hey, we're number one on the dial. People remember number one. They, you know, they always remember winners. They never, they never remember the second, third, fourth, fifth, that sort of thing. They always remember who's number one. So from that point, it, it is, you know, good to have that first position on the dial. I'm sure in years to come, somebody will, you know, the frequency will be opened up again and somebody will come in at 500 on the dial. You know, that, that's always a possibility down the road in years to come. But I don't foresee that in a long, for a long time yet. What kind of area do you cover? Do you consider your market? My market? Uh, my market right now is uh, Fort Erie, the Niagara Peninsula, as well as uh, Buffalo. That's my market. And in that market, in that area, there's uh, approximately 1.3 million people. I can make a pretty decent living off 1.3 million people if I get a good share. As far as AM versus FM is concerned, why could they, do you think AM is falling by the wayside or is it still not? AM is not falling by the wayside. No. Uh, within the last few weeks I've read articles that have said that quite the contrary. AM was taking a bit of a slide to FM, but it seems to be coming back. Why do you think that is? An American songwriter has been AM radio stations, AM radio operators, that sort of thing, um, are getting a little more aggressive. People are getting a little more aggressive now in radio. Um, you know, FM had was first to be in stereo, and um, you know that gave them the, uh, shall we say, the upper hand in the quality, the sound quality of the music coming out. Well, that was great. AM stereo now is alive and very well, and it's being used in a lot of markets. It's being used in Toronto, it's being used in Hamilton, it's being used in New York, LA, San Diego, Indianapolis, Washington, Baltimore, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, you know. Buffalo's even got AM stereo. <coughs> so, you know, AM versus FM used to be, you know, the, the rock sounds were on AM because we could do it better. But now, you know, people are saying, well, no, it's on FM. However, not anymore, and now it's starting to swing. Again, with FM, yep. we must have a lot of competition over in Buffalo with this FM rock. It well, seems to be a pretty heavy market. At this, this market, if I'm not mistaken, has the second highest density in North America of radio signals. You're talking about 97 radio signals in this area. And that, that's the second highest next to Los Angeles. You're talking an area that has, one, a lot of radio stations coming in, or can be heard in this area. Number two, a lot of fighting between radio stations to get their share of that market, to get the audience. So you've got to be good at what you do, or you're going to be gone. So how do you program to keep keep up with the competition? Do you have any specific format that you use, or how do you yeah. pick songs? Do you just everybody gets own? the same songs, right? Uh -huh. Everybody gets the same songs. It's it's no big deal. 
Everybody gets uh, Peter Cetera and Glory of Love. Everybody will get uh, Bruce Springsteen. Everybody will get Men at Work. Everybody will get, you know, the list is endless, Peter Gabriel and so forth. It's what you do between the songs is where the difference is. Because I can hit a song just as well as another guy can hit a song. I can just push a button. That's fine. But it's what you do between the songs is where you make the difference. You know, FM for years has been, you know, saying, hey, it's a lot of music, very, very little talk type thing, and that sort of stuff. Uh, AM was your basic rock station, hype it up, that sort of thing. Okay, now it's kind of swung the other way, especially in the United States, since the deregulation of radio in the U.S., they can pretty much do what they want, when they want, how they want. Um, so now you have FM radio playing, in a sense, old-style AM rock radio. They're using the same kind of uh, basic techniques and that sort of thing. And AM, you know, kind of said, what the heck is going on, and didn't know how to fight it. But now they've become more aggressive, and they are fighting it. They're fighting it very successfully. Uh, a lot of AM radio stations in Canada, as well as the U.S., are very, very successful, much more so than FM, especially in Canada. In terms of regulations, as you all know, are governed by the CRTC. Do you have any restrictions other than, obviously, the obscenities and that sort of thing as to what, what goes on over the air? Well, yeah, you know, you have to stick by what you said you would do. Um, when you apply for, uh, to put a radio station on the air, that sort of thing, you have to, one, submit the application with all the technical aspects and that sort of thing and your monetary backing and that sort of stuff and management basis and that sort of thing. Uh, you also have to submit to them a promise of performance, which tells them, the CRTC, what you're going to do and pretty much how you're going to do it. How much music you're going to play, how much talk you're going to do, how much news you're going to do, how much sports you're going to do, and that's all on a per week basis, busted down into a daily. And when you submit that, you better be prepared to live up to it, because if you don't, you're going to be in trouble. It's like when you're speeding on the highway. Man, you'll get away with it for a while. But you know they're going to catch you. And when they do, they hit you with the ticket. Well, the CRTC doesn't come up behind you in a black and white with red lights going. But what they do is they send you a telegram saying, hey, you're not sticking to what you said you were doing. You are breaking your promise of performance. Would you please adhere to it? What might that include? A promise of performance? Uh, the style of music you're going to play. Be it rock, contemporary, easy listening. Uh, elevator music, you know, whatever the case and that sort of thing. You know, that's one of the aspects. They want to know how much news you're going to do. And they want to bust it down on a weekly basis of how many hours and minutes totally you're going to do of news. <clears throat> oh, hey, good morning. Here along with Bob Dancy. As we kind of boogie through this one together, ooh, yeah, midweek, I love it. Only a couple more to go to the weekend. It's 20 to 9. Here are the Blow Monkeys and digging your scene from 5.30. CJFT. Good morning, huh? You seem to have a lot of energy on here. Do you find it hard to keep that up day after day? Um, Does it get tiring after a while? Not really. you got to remember, um, radio... Similarly to television, similarly to newspaper, is an entertainment medium. So if you look at it in that respect, hey, we're all actors in this biz. You know, and as the old line goes, the show must go on. Um, I know guys who have walked in before their air shift, and uh, literally their wife has just run out with the milkman. Their kid has just told him that he hates his guts. He's just gotten into a car accident and ruined his brand new car and that sort of thing. Man, when that microphone comes on, you'd think he's out having the time of his life. It's a never-ending party. And, you know, you've got to be prepared to do that. It's, it's a mental thing. It's psychological as well as it's physical. You've got to get into it. You've got to know what you're doing. You've got to know where you're going. And you got to be prepared to put the time in for it. I'll tell you, nothing ever, you'll never get anything overnight. Rome wasn't built in a day. Now, that's an old line. But that line holds true for anything in this business. 
I know guys who have been in this business for two years and said to me, man, why can't I be the program director? Why can't I be the general manager? Why can't I be the morning man? So you're, because, man, you're not good enough. Oh, yeah, well, look at this guy. He's only been in five years, you know. How come he's doing morning show in, in Toronto or Buffalo or Pittsburgh or Washington or one of the major centers? Say, because, man, he earned his stripes. He worked for it, you know. He works for it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You come in here, do four hours a day, and leave. And the only other thing that's on your mind is whether or not you're going to make it to the beer store on time and what you're going to wear tonight when you go out on a date or what bar you're going to to pick up girls. You know, it, it, it's just not done that way. What kind of people do you look for? What kind of qualities of people do you look for when you're... Well, obviously you're going to look for, you know, the basic qualities. The voice quality, what they sound like, how they act. You also look at things like how they are physically appearing to you. You know, you get some guy who walks in and it just looks like he got hit by a bulldozer, hasn't had sleep in six weeks, and has probably haven't had a square meal in a month. Doesn't shave and smells like hell. Tell me, are you going to hire him? He's going to go out and represent your radio station. You don't want that. You want somebody who's going to look good and who every time they go out to represent the radio station, people are going to say, hey, that guy's all right. Now, he may have hair down here. That's cool. But, you know, it's all his appearance and his attitude towards it. That's another big thing is attitude. If you walk in and, you know, you're talking in the sense that, oh, man, like, you know, hey, I've had a lousy day. I don't know why I'm doing really here for this interview. I, I, I don't know why I got into radio, man. It was just something I had to do. You know, nothing else to do. They wouldn't accept me in law school. My mom wanted me to be a doctor, and I figured the only way I was going to be a doctor is if I decided to do it, you know, on the back streets. You know, that, that's no good. If your attitude isn't any good, you're not going to get a job. So your physical appearance and your attitude, those are big points in it as well as the talent, your ability to do radio. Not everybody, and I'll tell you right now, not everybody can do radio. It is something that you've got to work at, and you've got to work at day in, day out. I've been in this business for over 10 years now. And I'll tell you, I don't stop learning. Every day, I keep working on it. What's the most important quality that someone on the air should possess? I don't know, gift of gab? The gift of gab. Just being Might. able to talk off the top of their head? Not necessarily. Just off the top of their head. Um, gift of gab in the sense that when they speak, when they open their mouth, that their brain is in motion. And they just don't sort of open their mouth and let her fly just for the hell of it. They don't know what else to do, so they just kind of say, well, hi, what's happening, you know, um, uh, uh, that sort of stuff. When you speak, you got to speak. you got to make sense of what you're doing. People have got to be able to relate to what you're talking about. How important is, is it to project that personality out there? Very important. This is, radio is theater of the mind. So what you project from yourself through the microphone and coming out of that speaker, that's what people will think of you as. What kind of image are you trying to create here with your station? Um, are you trying to get that fast-paced show, or are you kind of a no, laid-back, No, easy? we're not. We don't scream at people. What we are is a radio station in the sense that, hey, we're here, we're here to do a job, okay, number one. Um, what we're trying to bring across in our delivery and that sort of thing is that Hey, we're alive, we're not dead, we play fresh, up-to-date music, and we have a good time, you know. There has to be some sort of escape from it all. You, know, you can't go through life going, oh man, I go to work one more day and that's it, I'm going to blow the boss's head right off. I can't handle this one, man. You know, people use radio as an escape. So what you want to do is try and build them in sense that, uh, that Dallas or that dynasty that area where they can escape, where they can get into their car, where they can sit at home, you know, wherever on the beach, 
turn the radio on and hear the guy on the radio saying, hey man, it is a great day. And they can go and relate to that, look up at the sun and say, yeah, and I feel good too. First job, exciting radio, huh? Fame, glory, the whole bit. I work in a radio station. Oh yeah, what do you do? I, uh, I kind of file records. Well, what do you mean you kind of file? Well, like, what's that, man? Well, like, I take the record, let's say, Fernando by ABBA, and I walk into the music library and I go, A, uh, ABBA, Beatles, B, Chicago, C, that. That's how exciting my first job was. From there, I worked in, I worked in Toronto for about three and a half years. I worked in Hamilton for about uh, three years. And in Hamilton, that's where I really started to do a lot of work. I worked in engineering promotions, and I even did some on-air stuff there. Uh, when I came down to Niagara Falls, I did just straight on-air work. From there, I went from midnights to evenings to middays to afternoon drive. And from there, after five and a half years in Niagara Falls, I'm now running this radio station as the program director, morning man. And I'm even told I'm sometimes the station manager which really kind of freaks me out. So I don't know what the heck I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> Where'd you get your training from? Just what you call the school of hard knocks. Mm -hmm. I did not take any formal training. I did not go to the uh, National Institute of Broadcasting. Uh, I did not go to college, university for it. I just, I'm probably one of the last, or one of the few guys at my age that came through what's called the school of hard knocks means you learn or you get blown out the door. Yeah. How did you develop your voice? Was that just come over? My voice, I've just had it. It, it. That's it. You know. It was always that way? Yep. I smoke cigars. Keeps my voice low. Drink a lot of coffee. That's <laughs> That really doesn't work. Uh, cigarettes do not make your voice low. Uh, cigars don't make your voice low. Coffee doesn't make your voice low. If you drink coffee, don't put cream or sugar in it because the acid and the cream and the uh, Sugar coats your throat and uh, gums up your mouth. If you ever notice after you have a cup of coffee, especially if you load it up with cream and sugar, you end up with a ton of saliva. And it really sounds interesting on the air when you go on. You got a mouthful of, you know, the guys will understand that. The women will probably go, gross. And that's exactly what it is. You know, especially when you got to say, uh, hang on a second while I. <coughs> Next. How important is voice in, in radio? Is it? It's not everything. It used it? to be extremely critical. Uh -huh. If if you had a voice, just a voice, nothing else, just the voice, you could do radio. Because a station manager or program director years ago would say, "Hey, look, I don't want you doing anything that's not on this piece of paper." So all you do is, when this song ends and the guy points to you, you read that line and don't do anything else. So if you had a voice years ago. That's what it was all about, you know. I mean, I'm talking years ago. Um, voice is still important. You know, obviously, if you have such a high-pitched voice, you know, unfortunately, you may not have the greatest of luck. <laughs> um, you know, if, if, if you have a very deep voice, you're going to find that you'll probably get a job. This guy could probably figure, well, he's a little rough right now, or she's a little rough right now, but I can work with this person to uh, get them in the line, and they've got a good voice, a good natural voice. Any advice for people who are starting off? Don't expect to become the morning man, program director, afternoon drive guy in major market ten minutes after you get out of the NIB. It won't happen. I'll guarantee it. And if it does, call me, because I want I want the address of that guy too, whoever hires you. But don't come out expecting that you're going to end up in New York City, Los Angeles, Chicago, uh, Toronto, Vancouver, Montreal, any of the major centers, because it won't happen. Uh, first thing program directors look for, and it's the same way with me, experience, man. When it comes right down to it, experience. I want it. And then there's that old question of, well, how do I get experience if nobody will give me the chance? Say, hey, man, that's not my problem. That's yours.